a month, man, man. I ain't got 750 to pay. Everybody now. Inglorious bastards, not bastards. 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 Yeah. Stirs, you got to put e in there. Is that the Brad? Is that how Brad Pitt would say it in this movie? You have this group called the Bastards. And bastards. That's what it, the, the bastards. The fighting force. They were this legendary force of, of Nazi killers running around uh, occupied France, just killing every Nazi they find. Oh, and, and that's what's really neat is they're these these larger than life epic heroes. And they are the best part of the film, if you ask me. They yeah, really but, are. But, but the problem with this film, at least for me, was that. They're hardly in it. Uh, Brad Pitt, his character, Lieutenant Aldo. Aldo Rain. And he says, look, what we do is simple. We go in and we kill Nazis. We don't take prisoners. And afterwards, to just to prove how badass we are and to spread fear in other Nazis, we take their scalps. And he says, every guy in this, in this regiment owes me 100 scalps. And I want my scalps. But then it goes into... A bunch of other characters that intertwine with each other. One where it involves a, a young Jew girl who got away from being murdered and she has a, a theater which she uses as a tool of revenge. And then we have another subplot that involves an actress more in the secret mission to go in and infiltrate the Third Reich who, are, ha, who happen to be attending a famous movie premiere. Yeah. So it's, it's two yeah. different like storylines that collide in both with the same goal and I think that's where the movie loses focus well, I thought it, be so, it becomes a revenge film it's a Jewish revenge film mm -hmm. that's what this movie is well the thing about this movie is I was shocked that uh, Captain America didn't show up and throw his mighty shield with somebody's f***ing head well that might as well happen because this is not meant to be historically accurate at all this is Quentin Tarantino's own gonzo alternate reality of World War 2 Quentin Tarantino is I think he's a great director but I'm tired of Quentin Quentin Tarantino film school. I mean, every movie has to be Quentin Tarantino showing us how much he knows about film history. We got that three movies ago. I, I don't mind that. What I mind is that every single one of those scenes, just one scene like that after another, they go on forever. The scenes where they're setting up tension, where you're wondering, all right, who... Who's going to give in? You know, who's going to f*** up? He sets this up so well that, you know, it really does hold your interest. But, yeah, as far as uh, throwing in, you know, the continuous film references of, I'm sure half these references, the general movie public is just not going to get. And not going um, to care. And they're not going to care. Yeah, yeah, and it really doesn't serve the story too well. Now, that being said, what keeps keeps your interest in those is that main actor who plays the German SS officer. Oh, Christopher that, Waltz. And, and he's amazing in this yeah, film. Yeah, Colonel Hans. Yeah. Uh, the Jew Hunter. That's all you have to call him. Colonel yeah, Hans Lando. Jew Hunter. Hunter. That actor will always be known as the Jew Hunter. Well, <laughs> sure. I know. Because I think I, I've never seen this guy before. So you're the Jew Hunter. I'm a detective. A damn good detective. Finding people is my specialty. So naturally I worked for the Nazis finding people. And yes, some of them were Jews. But Jew Hunter? <laughs> Just a name that stuck. Well, you do have to admit, it is catchy. Do you control the nicknames your enemies bestow on you? Aldo the Apache and the Little Man. The German's nickname for me is the Little Man. And as if to make my point, I'm a little surprised how tall you were in real life when you were a little fellow, but not circus midget little. But by far, he has the greatest performance in this film, along with Brad Pitt. He's brilliant. I mean, he's speaking in this great accent that's really, it's just funny every time he talks. Mm -hmm. uh, but then he has to speak Italian. The whole time you're thinking, you know, because he's, he's like, well, yeah, I speak some Italian. And you're like, how in the is this guy going to speak any <laughs> any kind of language? You're older, the Apache. Hey. <laughs> well, Warren, if you heard of us, you probably heard we ain't in the prisoner taking business. We in the killing Nazi business. And cousin, business is uh, booming. Eli Roth mm -hmm. as the bear Jew. Uh, okay. Uh, here we go. Oh, I'm right. this yeah. up to you two. He just looked too f***ing excited to be in a goddamn Quentin Tarantino <laughs> film. Throughout every scene, I thought his eyes were going to bust out of his head but that was and that, that was his character he's playing this guy yeah. who loves killing nazis co-host is saying like he was so excited to be in the movie he really beat the shit out that actor like <laughs> they felt like they're yelling cut and he's still beating that guy I, I, and also the thing that i think is going to throw some people off quinn tarantino is throwing all this stuff that he loves about movies from different eras i mean to bring up a uh, like black exploitation font for one of the characters really threw me off. I, was, I I really would not have been surprised if in the middle of the movie Hitler would have came up like Shaft. Hitler, he's a Nazi mother. Shut your mouth. <laughs>
But that was part of what kept it interesting for me. It was like, yeah. oh, they're breaking up, and I'm sorry, but it points the monotony with, mm-hmm. with something more Tarantino-ish. Let's not yeah. forget, almost all of this is subtitled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's stuck with that, and I like that. I respect that choice a lot. Yeah. I really I do. I do, too. It's, it's a full-price movie. It's really good with some minor flaws, and yeah, some people are going to have some serious issues with the fact that the film is all talking. Too much talking without any reason for there being as much talking as there is. There's some visual stuff that's just brilliant, especially towards the end. Uh, it's still a low matinee. I'm giving it a matinee only because, yeah, it does suffer uh, with too much talking. But at the same time, it does set up some really nice, like, just intense scenes. It really, it's just, uh, I guess, those moments where the movie just seemed too long that really kept this from being a great movie for me. I do like this movie a lot. When it's entertaining, it's entertaining. I don't like it enough to give it full price, but I do give it a very enthusiastic matinee. Kids are so stupid these days, though. I wonder if he's doing a disservice to <laughs> to this country because... Oh, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're going to have kids getting up and, you know, like yeah. 13, 14 years old. <laughs> uh, 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 Brad Pitt and Quentin Tarantino won World War II. <laughs> the end. I'm sure he'd like to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Try to make it.